Hello, my name is Aaron Durr, and I'm here to talk to you about the Apollo 1 Space Shuttle. I'm going to touch base on the legal issues, both morally and ethically, regarding the tragedy that took place. After the Cold War, the race for space exploration has begun. The race mainly was between the USA and the USSR to put a man on the moon. The USA rushed to put together the first shuttle, Apollo 1. The Apollo 1 was scheduled to launch on February 21, 1967. In light of this, a preliminary test was being run on January 27, 1967. The brave astronauts selected for this mission are, the, are Virgil Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chafe. These three gentlemen were dedicated and eager to be the first ones to be on the moon. Before the test was even to take place, a number of alarms went off, including Grissom experiencing problems with the oxygen in his suit and high oxygen flows in the cockpit. On top of the warning alarms, the communication between the cockpit and the mission control were faulty and partially breaking up. These issues and warnings were analyzed and discussed, but were ultimately ignored. As a result of the ignorance of the alarms, a fire broke out. The fire engulfed the entire cockpit and killed all three of the astronauts. It can be said that the fire was a direct result of five different factors, both mechanically and human errors. The atmosphere in the cabin was a major contributing factor. The atmosphere in the cabin was 100% oxygen. This gave the fire fuel and the ability to originally ignite. This level of oxygen should have never been reached and therefore regulations have been changed to ensure the cockpit never reaches a such level again. Another factor was the electrical system was compromised inside the cockpit. This was mainly due to the fact that the cheap incombustible material was used that was easily frayed. The frayed wires created a short which led to a spark and can then be said that it was direct cause of the fire. This led to the regulations being altered so that frayed wires can be taken out of the equation. The cockpit was also made from materials that were combustible. During the test, nylon nets were in place to hold cargo and other instruments. Once again, this gave the fire even more fuel to burn. Another contributing factor was the hatch design on the Apollo. It was more of a ratchet style. This specific style of hatch seals really well, but takes time to open. In a situation like this, every second was needed to escape, and this hatch took valuable time away from the three astronauts. The style of hatch on future designs has been changed and suited for an easier and quicker escape. The ultimate cause of the disaster was the mismanagement. With all of these alarms and warnings going off, the management ignored them all. On top of the ignored warnings, the management did not take the time to properly construct the shuttle and many things were overlooked. They wanted to push through based on the ideal that time was very sensitive. They needed to get the Apollo 1 to the moon as quickly as possible. Now looking at this issue from an engineer in Ontario with today's mindset, examining this with a legal mindset, it can be seen that there are a number of moral and ethical dilemmas at hand. Using the Professional Engineers Act, we can see that the following misconducts were made. The engineers failed to satisfy Section 72.2b, a failure to make reasonable provisions for the safeguarding of life of property of a person who may be affected by the work of which the practitioner is responsible. Also, 72.2c, the failure to act to correct or report the situation that the practitioner believes that may endanger the safety or the welfare of the public. And 72.2f, a failure of a practitioner to present clearly to the practitioner's employer, the consequences to be expected from a deviation proposed in work in the, of the professional engineering judgment of the practitioner is overruled by a non-technical authority in case where the practitioner is reasonable for, responsible for the technical adequacy of the professional engineering at work. There are several actions that could have been made by the engineers to avoid such disaster. They could have raised the awareness of the issue to the managers. If still no actions are taken, then the process of whistleblowing is to be made by consulting the PEO. Again, if no actions are made to resolve this issue, then regulatory board must be notified. In doing this, the engineer's job is most certainly on the line as well as the company's credibility. That being said, this is still the correct choice to be made. Or you can make the decision that the engineers NASA made by ignoring the situation and hope for the best. The legal case in this given situation would be tort law. The first requirement of tort law is that a duty of care is owed. In this situation, regarding the Apollo, the engineers will owe the astronauts a duty of care to provide a shuttle to safely get them to the desired location and return safely. The second requirement is that a duty of care has been breached. The engineers failed to provide a safe shuttle when the wires ignited to fire, and the hatch wasn't designed for quick egress. They also should have had emergency ground response units at the ready.
The third and final requirement is that the damage is incurred, and this is the case when the fire engulfed in the cockpit killed all three astronauts. The plaintiff in this case would have been the astronauts and their families. The defendants would be the engineers who designed the Apollo and NASA itself, as well as the manager and the mission control. All the conditions for this case are made and finally with the violation of the, the gross misconduct is especially clear when the manager ignored all the warnings and the faulty designs. In this case, the courts would most likely rule in favor of the plaintiffs and the defendant would be ruled to pay the charges to the plaintiff. The Apollo 1 disaster led the way for regulations and the future space endeavors.